Dear students and friends, I wanted to take a few moments to share with you some consciousness around this time that uh, the whole world, each one of us and the world together are experiencing. Of course, on a very basic level, it's a time of chaos, of fear, of, of disease, of death. But Kabbalistically, we know that whenever there is great darkness, there is also an opportunity for great light. I'm reminded of a story that in the 1940s, during the time of the Second World War, during the time of the Holocaust, of course, a time of great death and destruction, the Bashlag was writing his commentary, the Sulam, revealing for the first time the great light of the Zohar. And some people came to him and said, this is not the time for that. Now is the time to, to be doing other things, not to be writing, not to be writing even a, an important commentary on the, on the Sulam, the Zohar. But Rav Lashak said the following, you have to understand. King Solomon says, Zele umatze asaha elokim, which literally means that everything that the, is done in light is done in darkness, and everything that is done in darkness is done in light. We live in a world of equilibrium, which means that when there is great darkness coming into the world, it also means that there must be the opportunity for great light. And therefore, Rav Ashlag said, there is no other time in human history that I could have revealed the great light of the Zohar only during the time that there was also, sadly, so much darkness being revealed in the world. And this concept, this understanding of Zel Umat Zeh, that as we look into the world and we see so much pain and suffering and death and destruction and chaos and fear that's gripping everybody, it also means to us, to those who are connected, who are awakened, that the Creator is telling us there's an opportunity here. There's a great opportunity here. There's an opportunity here that has never been available, not for you individually and not for the world. And that's where I want all of our consciousness to go. Yes, we are aware of what is happening in the world, but we know that that means spiritually that there is an opportunity, an opportunity to bring great light into this world, an opportunity to bring great light into our lives, each one of us individually and collectively. You know, the Zohar tells us that when the flood occurred, it says that the, the, all the floods, it says the that all the gates of water and flood from below opened up. And as if the, 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 all the openings of the heavens poured down. Now, on a physical level, most of the world experienced that as a flood, as a destructive flood that brought death, that brought great pain, destruction to almost the entire world. But the Zohar says that at that same time that these floodgates from above and from below were opening and bringing forth destruction, the deeper secret and what was also happening was that the gates of wisdom, of light, of blessing were also being opened up. Now those who had the merit to connect to the positive floodgates received light and blessings and protection. Those who connected to, unfortunately, the negative floodgates, that's what they received as well. That's our opportunity now. We have to know it. This is the time for certainty. Not certainty in, yes, we know what is happening out there, but certainty in the opportunity that the Creator is calling us to now. None of this is coincidental. The Creator is calling the world the Creator is calling us and saying there is an opportunity, a great, great opportunity for light and blessings that cannot be missed. Now, not coincidentally with the flood, as the story tells us, what was the ark? What was the ark that protected Noah? What is the ark that protects us? And we talk about it all the time and we will continue talking about it, but this is the time that we have to not only talk about it the most, but also be awakened to it the most. Zor. The Rav would always remind us it's all about the Zor. 
So if we talk about the opportunity that is available, a greater life now than maybe ever in, the, in human history, certainly in our own lifetimes, absolutely. It means it necessitates that each one of us much more deeply connect to the light, to the power of the Zohar. So whether that's my study, my scanning, my dissemination of the Zohars, and, and I know now that there's, the world is so much more open. As many Zohars as we can get out there, the Pinchas Zohars, the sacred Zohars, but also for myself, for each one of us, to deepen my connection to the protective power, to the blessings power of the Zohar. So if we think about the fact that the Creator is calling us, calling the world, and we think about, of course, what is the most important answer, what is the most important tool that we can use to draw, of course, the Zohar, but not Zohar as any of us have connected to it before, for each one of us, whatever it means to be more connected, to be disseminating more of the light of the Zohar, to be reading more of the Zohar, now is the time. The transformation that your soul can go through, the light and the blessings that you can draw to yourself and to the world is available now, like maybe will never be available again in our lifetimes. It's not coincidental when the portion of Vaikra with the Creator, it says, called to Moses, and it says only Moses heard the call. Not everybody heard it. This is the Creator calling us. The Creator is calling us and saying, the growth of your soul, the growth of your light, the blessings you will bring into your own life and into the world, now is the time I am calling you. I am calling you. Third, which is very important, we know that consciousness is so important. And we know it's also a time that there is so much real reason for fear. There's a tremendous reason why people are scared. Now, of course, we have to take precautions. We have to follow the guidelines and so on and so forth. But I th know that once you've taken care of all that is necessary, I'll, tell, I'll show you personally, almost every morning after my morning connection, as I was preparing for the day and having my, morning, my first morning tea, I would often, I would, I would almost always look at the news. Half hour, 45 minutes, catch up on the day's news. I've made it a rule for myself not to watch news. Now, again, I want to be very careful. Of course, you have to gather whatever information you need for your safety and information you need for your health. But other than that, I strongly, strongly recommend do not allow your consciousness to go to fear. And by following fear, your consciousness goes to fear. The Kabbalists teach that our consciousness is a magnet. The Kabbalists teach that our consciousness is a magnet. So if I am fearful, if I am doubtful, if I am full with worry, that's the energy I'm drawing. Now, the Kabbalists call this a time of magifa, a time when there's a tremendous amount of negativity around us. We have to protect ourselves from that negativity. The way to protect ourselves from that negativity is by forcing ourselves, forcing ourselves not to have fear, not to have worry, not to have doubt. There's a very important teaching from Rabbi Chaim Vital. Many of you know the great student of the Baal Shem Tov, sorry, the great student of the Ari. And he writes the following, the kol zman ha all during the time of the plague, of the pandemic, Tirchak me'od, stay far, far away, mikol minekas, from any type of anger, vidaga, and worry, vitzvon, and sadness. Stay far away from these three things, anger, worry, and sadness. Ve'aderaba, and on the other hand, tiesameach tamid bekol minei simcha. Find reasons to be happy. Find reasons to be happy and all kinds of happy things. Why? Because now is the time we need to both protect ourselves from all the negativity that is around. The way we do that is protecting our consciousness, anger, worry, and fear, by awakening silly reasons, happiness, happiness. There's more happiness and more happiness and more. Find reasons <coughs> to be happy. We draw light, we draw protection, we draw light and protection. And the fourth, the, sorry, the fourth important awakening, there's a verse that I think we should all be thinking about 
during this time when so many people are in need and are alone and are in fear. It says, Rodef tzedakah v'chesed mimtza chayim tzedakah v'chavod. Rodef tzedakah v'chesed, which means those who run after doing kindness will find life filled with blessings. You have to run after kindness. There's an opportunity, you know, even from within our communities, from your own communities, there's so many people who need, maybe just need a phone call, maybe just need a text, an action of kindness. You cannot, this, during the time of Magifa, during the time of plague, you can't allow a day to go by without running after kindness. Odef tzedakah v'chesed, those who run after charity and kindness, in chayim, you will be blessed with life and with endless blessings in this life. So, as we be, come together now a little bit to raise our consciousness during this time, because we understand now, as true Kabbalists, that first the Creator is calling us. None of this is coincidental. There's many reasons, of course, that we don't even understand. But one thing we do know for sure, the Creator is calling the world, and the Creator is calling us. What your soul can become, who you can become during these days, it's not going to be available to you any other time, any other time. Let's grab the opportunity. Grab the opportunity. How do we grab the opportunity? First, by knowing that, as Ravashlak said, especially during the dark, time, the dark times, we are going to be the ones who are going to draw great light and reveal great light for ourselves, for those around us, and for the world. We're going to do it by reinvigorating, reinvigorating in deeper and deeper ways our connection to our arc, protective arc of the Zohar, in whatever ways we can, disseminating it, studying it, and so on. Third, we're going to protect our consciousness. We're going to remember what Rabbi Chaim Vital said, especially during the time of the pandemic, you cannot afford to be angry, you cannot afford to worry, you cannot be, afford to be sad, because those are magnets, chas shalom, to the negative energies that are in the world today, prevalent so much. But rather, as Rabbi Chaim Vital tells us, our conscious with certainty in the light of the Creator and with awakening joy in all ways, all the time. Not coincidental, the month of Nisan, the month of Aries that we are entering today is the month of certainty. Just ask for it. Ask for it in a deeper way. Ask for it in a strong way. You will receive it. And fourth, as we said, Rodef Tzedakav Chesed. Let's make sure that there isn't a day that goes by that we are not running after kindness. If we do all these things, and we take all the opportunities that we have, and we understand, again, as we said, Ravashlag, please don't, don't forget what Ravashlag said. This is the time. This is the time for greater light than ever. This is the time for greater blessings than ever. This is the time for greater certainty than ever. And it's not Hashem for ourselves, for those around us, for our communities, and for the world, we will merit to change, to change ourselves, to change our world, so that after this pandemic has passed, we will look back and say, no, we're back to where we were, no. We are so much better. We are so much more elevated. We have transformed in the most amazing ways that we could have never achieved any other time in human history. So may we all have the merit to truly internalize the message and live it every moment of these tremendously opportune, light-filled days. Chodesh Tov.